This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. This is Alex Bennett, and this is The Ramble, and The Ramble goes on till midnight, Eastern Daylight Time, on the, uh, let's see here, the right coast of the United States of America, and a little bit later, we'll be checking in with our citizens panel and talk about some of the issues of the day, or maybe not, maybe we'll just talk about silly stuff, but in the meantime, uh, we have a guest, as we always do on these uh, Tuesdays. Is this Tuesday? Yeah, it's Tuesday, therefore, this guy... Uh, must be here. Ladies and gentlemen, we go out now to California to speak to a man of infinite wisdom, Larry <laughs> Bubbles Brown. Hello, Lawrence. Hello, Alec. How you doing? It would be hard to top our last show we did about suicide. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, something that, uh, you know, uh, we all... Cont- Have you ever contemplated suicide? Uh, sure, but it's, uh, I think I'm too afraid of death to actually go through with it. Yeah, well, that's my problem. I'd kill myself, yeah. only I'm afraid of it. <laughs> I know. Really? I mean, what a better way. I live in an eight-story building. Splat, that's it. I'm taken care of, right? Three seconds is all. Your, <laughs> your problems are over. Is it, is it three seconds? I think it was like when they were jumping out of the trade towers from the 70th floor, I thought they said it was like, Seconds or like that. Yeah, really? Yeah, which would, of course, with your adrenaline flowing, it probably seemed like an hour. But. Yeah. Well, you see, we're, we're cat sitting a cat, as you know, because when we were starting this interview, the cat came into the room and mm-hmm. I didn't want her in here while I was doing this, mainly because it's too adult a topic for her, to, her tender ears. <laughs> but more than that, it's because, uh, you know, the cat. Hotchkeys around and would would want to walk on the on the on the keyboard because that's what she notices I'm paying attention to, and then she would cut you off and we'd have to start all over again. So anyway, so what we had to do in cat sitting is we had to go find these screens that came with the apartment for the windows to put the screens up so the cat wouldn't go out on the ledge and commit kitty suicide. Oh God, yeah. Well, you know, they like to do stuff like that. And maybe the cat could go out there and come back and not be hurt at all and not slip. But I'm not going to take that chance. I don't want to live in terror of this cat out on a ledge, right? So I had to put in all these, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, uh, window covers, grills, uh, screens. The cat, knowing that this bothers the shit out of me. <laughs> in front of two of these uh, uh, screens is a, uh, 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 what do you call it, a heating unit, a, a um, radiator. Don't bother me. I just woke up a while ago. A radiator. So she goes and stands on the radiator and looks out the window. And I'm just afraid <laughs> that she's, because they're not in there that tight, right? They're being held by the window. I'm afraid She's going to see a fly or something outside and try and jump at it, you know, and go yeah. through the, the grill. So I, I'm, the cat's been driving me nuts. We'll go there and stand on that radiator looking out at the world. So finally, I had to put up, a, <laughs> I, I had to staple a towel up, so she couldn't look out the window. So what does she do? She goes to another window where there's a, a, a air conditioner, and stands on top of the air conditioner so she can look out the window. They're going to find a way. Um, Amazingly precocious cat. And this is all we've been talking about for days now. For the week, we well, we've had her over a week. Her mother is coming back tomorrow night. All right. So, one more day. One more day with pussy. Yeah, we had a. uh, There was a comedy club where they found a stray cat last year, and the manager took it home. It's now a year old, and this cat actually likes water and has learned to turn the faucets on. Oh, really? So she gets in the sink, turns the faucet on, jumps off, and then, of course, when she's in the sink, it puts the stopper down. So now every 
this woman's place is getting flooded like three times a week because the cat does that i well yeah yeah i my when i uh i had a girlfriend uh who uh, had this one cat that was so incredibly precocious very smart and um uh, she went off to Greece, and while she was in Greece, she said, would you come over and take care of my cat every day? So what I would do is leave the radio show, get in my car, go over to Richmond. And I figured, I used to get a nap every day. I'll get my nap there. All right? <laughs> so uh, the cat is a, it was a, I believe it was Siamese. And Siamese are very, very smart. Yeah. And... Um, I uh, decided it was time to go to sleep, so I went, kitty, out, okay, because I knew the cat would, like, come in the room and make noise, and it was a talkative cat, too, because, you know, Siamese talk like crazy. So I, I closed the door, all right? I'm trying to sleep, and all of a sudden, I hear the doorknob turning. <laughs> and the door opens, and in walks the cat. Mm-hmm. So I closed put the cat out again, close the door. Again, the cat turns the doorknob, <laughs> right, and opens it up and, and comes in. Now, th th that would be a good story if it ended there, all right? But now I said, okay, you can stay in the room. I don't care. I'm going to sleep. And I kind of turned on my side and started going to sleep. And all of a sudden, the clock radio goes on. And I look over, and the cat is sitting on the clock radio. Then <laughs> I figure, well, accidentally pushed the button, turned on the clock radio, right? So mm -hmm. I turn it off. I go back to sleep, and, and all of a sudden, the radio goes back on again. And I look over, and the cat is sitting on top of the radio. So finally, I just I threw the cat off the radio. I went back put my head down on the pillow. I then decided I would at least keep my eyes towards the radio and see what goes on. And this cat would jump up on the radio, knew exactly where the button was to turn on the radio, and then would start stomping its foot until it started. Wow. That's a smart cat. And I said, I guess I'm not getting any sleep today. You know, uh, mm -hmm. this, cat, this cat is smarter than I am. <laughs> okay. Because I didn't even know how to use the clock radio, but apparently the cat had figured it out. So. Set the alarm. Yeah. So, you know, so I am, um, and I, I like cats, you know. I have some kind of fear that I've had about hurting this cat, though. And I guess it's because it's not mine. You know, it's somebody else's. Yeah, you don't want anything to happen to her. So, yeah, I'm very careful when I pick her up and all of that. And I feel kind of like. Uh, afraid of being alone with her, you know. But she is so smart and she is so sweet and she is so nice. And the terrible part is, my wife and and I as well have gotten so attached to this cat that we're going to miss her when she goes back to her mommy tomorrow. Yeah, you know. So, um, you know, that's and that's all we've been talking about. The people. Do you do you know how many f pictures my wife has taken of that cat? And I berated her for it, saying, gee, how many pictures can you take of a cat? And today I went onto my iPhone, and I've got at least 20 pictures of the cat. Mm -hmm. you know. You've never had a pet, have you? Where have you? No, I, I like cats a lot. The problem is uh, they, you get a pet, they die, and it's so depressing. Uh, my sister had a big Siamese that died a couple of years ago. I'm still bummed out about that. So I don't think I could own one because yeah. I don't want to go through that. You don't again. want to have to go through the loss. It's horrible, I am. Yeah, wow. You yeah. really get attached to them. And well, yeah, uh, I, I know that feeling because I had a lot of cats that had died on me at one time or another, especially one that was like 18 years old. And uh, when you have a cat that long, you, when it dies, you kind of say to yourself, you know, he and I never actually talk to each other, but somehow I feel like we have. You know, yeah. Like, there's definitely something going on there between a human and a, an animal, so it's some type of communication, I think. And people people say that they get really depressed when uh, 
when animals are, uh, uh, you know, die or whatever, it's like one of the worst things that can happen to you. It's like the death, a death in the family. You know, and especially when you get to that point, you, you've never had this probably happen to you. But you have to put the animal down because... Oh, I could, I could not do that. Yeah. I know people that have. That it, just sounds well, like the worst. But, you, you know, when, it, when it's time to do it, you do it because you don't want to... Um, uh, you don't want to. Uh, you don't want the cat to suffer. You know. You don't want the animal to suffer. And you know it's the right thing to do. I, 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 with one cat couldn't do it. Had to have somebody actually take the cat down to the vet for me because I couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. And so you know. But it's been wonderful having a pet here. My wife and I haven't argued since the cat moved in. You know, <laughs> we've had we've had something else to concentrate on rather than each other. Yeah, uh, and it, it's been uh, it's been wonderful. And the first day the cat disappeared, didn't see him. The second day the, she came out. Third day she's hanging out with us. About two nights ago she actually fell asleep uh, in my arms. So you know, it, 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 I'm just wondering when her mother gets back tomorrow if she's going to recognize her. Maybe you can keep her. Plus we have this huge apartment, you know. She probably likes that. Oh yeah, she loves that. Yeah. She really loves it. So, uh, you know, she can, because she has a lot of places to run a lot. So, anyway. So, uh, how's your, how's how's the career going? The career, I'm more, I'm making enough to uh, pay the bills, so I guess it's okay. Yeah, but your bills aren't a lot. No, I'm a minimalist. I got uh, fairly cheap rent. Yeah. And, uh. That, do you have a yeah. savings account? Do you have money in your savings? I got a little money in that account. Yeah. I don't. Uh, I don't buy anything. That's why. I need to get a mattress. That's. This one's falling apart. And what? What? You, I. We actually. We went out. My wife, you know, loves shopping for stuff, and she shopped for a bed. And she went and got this bed. I guess it cost her like fifteen hundred. Eighteen hundred dollars, and within a couple of months, it went bad on us. It started Jeez. sagging on one side. Really? What? So she calls the guy up and says, "What's with this thing? It's sagging." And he said, "Oh well, I'll pick it up. I'll get you a new one." So he had to order a new one from this company. It gets here within a month. It's sagging, and uh, he wouldn't replace that one. So she went and got another one, and it's fine. But you know what the problem is? We try to get a bed that has a mattress that has two sides to it, right? So you can flip it over. It's almost impossible to find them these days. They're all like these one-sided mattresses. Oh, yeah. I used to flip them. Yeah. Uh, but what about yours? Is your current one that's falling apart a double-sided mattress? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. So yeah. you flip it. And yeah. But it's 12 years old. It's well past its years. You know, I, I think people would probably wish we were talking about death right now. <laughs> I don't like to buy stuff. I just, I don't know. You gotta get it delivered. Now there's some mattress here. I think you can like order it, and it comes like in a little box, and it they just mail it to you. It comes in a little box, a fairly little box, you know, like a suitcase, and then it opens up. It's like this foam stuff. And... But it, it, it's not like your traditional mattress. It's like no, no. Those... It's like one of those memory foam things. You know, I would. Uh, do you like those? I haven't really tried them. I think I would, but. Why do you think uh, you would I, like it? I don't like I don't like a real soft mattress. I like something. Yeah, but th- that kind of is is the opposite of it's not soft. It's not hard. It's just spongy. You know, I yeah, found it might I, not be good. I know a lot of people don't like them. So. I found them hard to sleep on. You know, I mean, I I, I, I my greatest fear is getting a memory foam mattress and then it won't remember who I am. <laughs> you know. Your memory foam has Alzheimer's. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever have the? I always been as intrigued when they came out the water bed. I never. I think I was in a hotel once, and I kind of liked it. But 
I uh, did you ever try to have sex on a waterbed? Oh yeah, yeah. Not fun. No. You know, and part of the reason it's not fun is that I found that as I'm okay, sex is movement. Okay, and you move forward as a guy, and you're lunging, as it were. <laughs> lunging. <laughs> now, if you have a waterbed and you lunge, the person also lunges at the same speed so that you're really not creating the necessary friction to make it pleasurable. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Get what I'm saying? In other yeah. words, you're going, Room, and the bed's going, Room. And then one time, I, this woman I knew had a gel bed. Remember the gel beds? No. Yeah, they were filled with, I don't know, jello, I guess. Uh, uh, it it, it, uh, it uh, came, and, and right, I, I, I went over there, rather, and I started having sex with her, and all of a sudden I look at the, her, you know, the back of the bed, and it's like a wave starting to come at me. It's like all the gel had like gone to one end. So that was terrible for sex. I just find a great old-fashioned mattress is the best thing you can have for sex. So. Nothing like a tsunami in the middle of sex. Yeah, right, exactly. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, that's all about beds, folks. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, the best bed, I think, strange, I had a girlfriend who had a bed that was just, it was like, it wasn't, it wasn't foam, I can't remember what it was exactly, but it was just really hard. And um, I got on it and I went, I'm not going to be able to sleep on this. I'm not going to be able to get a, night, get a good night's sleep on this. By the way, great to have sex with because it doesn't move, Right. Uh, mm -hmm. But I so I I laid down on this thing. And it, was, it was hard, right? And I'm going, and all of a sudden I'm out like a light. It was the most uh, comfortable night's sleep I ever got, and it wasn't a, a mattress. It wasn't foam. It wasn't anything. It was like almost like uh, a hard plank of wood with just something over it. And she liked a hard surface like that. And and she said, just give it a try. I think you'll find it uh, invigorating. And I tried it, and it was just fine. It was terrific. I had a good time with it. Slept like a baby. So. Slept like a baby. Cried all night. <laughs> cried, cried, cried all night. Yes, right. Cried like a baby. Oh, man, oh, man. So how is San Francisco these days? I, every time I talk to you, I got to talk about San Francisco. Well, it's San Francisco. It's July, so it's really cold. <laughs> yeah, the, if people don't understand that. I, in fact, I look at my, uh, I look at my iPhone, right? And I, sometimes I have San Francisco on, and San Francisco comes up, and I look at it, and it, it's like you know, it's ninety-six degrees here, and in California, it's fifty-three. Yeah, the uh, you actually have to use the heat a lot in the summer here. Which yeah, and what we do in in San Francisco, you get a hot fall. And yeah, September and October, the hottest days here. Yeah, yeah, September and October, and they refer to that as Indian Indian summer. I don't know right. why, you know. Uh, or is it Indigenous People's Summer? I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, you know, what is the don't want to offend. <laughs> what is the correct nomenclature on that one? So Very uh, hot. They, maybe they always say, for some reason, uh, they always think there's going to be an earthquake when it's hot here. Although it was hot that day in 89. So. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, anyway. Earthquake weather. So in Washington, once again, they're talking about... Um, uh, medical uh, care, and uh, now what? What does Larry uh, Bubbles Brown have for for medical care? I have Kaiser, mm -hmm. or as you once called it, <laughs> doctor assisted suicide. It's a line I say to this day, and I always quote you. I says, "My friend Larry Bubbles Brown once <laughs> called Kaiser doctor assisted suicide." <laughs> I should bring that back. I don't think I ever use it in the act. Yeah, yeah. 
And in fact, uh, it was um, uh, it was uh, I, I think didn't you almost lose us them as a sponsor? I did lose that as a sponsor. Yeah, it was, uh, after the traffic report, the spot was by Ka- Kaiser and. Their line was Kaiser different from the ground up, and I tagged it with because that's where most of our patients are. <laughs> and I actually, I actually have the memo around here somewhere. Take, <laughs> take all Kaiser spots off immediately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think McNally wanted to fire me, and then I think you actually stepped up and said, "No, no." And well, they had one rule at that radio station, and that was don't go after the advertisers. Right. And I figured that was not a bad rule for me to abide by because if I lost sponsors, what good am I to them? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, but no, I mean, uh, it, it, we're, he was going to fire you at that point. He wanted to get rid of me, yeah. And then it was, uh, I think you stepped in and you smoothed it over somehow. Yeah. Wow. I'll, uh, next time I, uh, I'll have it around here somewhere. I'll, I'll get it for you. You actually have the memo. Yeah, the angry memo. <laughs> uh, I I Bobby was, Slayton. Several exclamation points in the memo. I remember. That. Uh, Bobby Slayton lost us an advertiser once. Yeah, which well, I remember that, and you were you were not happy about that. I remember. Well, I was on vac. I think I was on vacation, right. and he was doing the show for me. He did the show, and I think he was interviewing Slash or somebody. And yeah, I forget. I forget what sponsor it was. Uh, yeah, but anyway, he, he. But I come back, and they go, "Well, we only we only lost an advertiser because of Bobby and blah blah blah." And I got mad at Bobby. I didn't talk to Bobby for like a month because I said, "You know, I leave you my house to stay in, right? And you burn it to the fucking ground." <laughs> And then I said, out ah, of hell with it. It's not worth being mad at Bobby for because he's my oldest and dearest friend, you know. Um, but he said something about somebody, and the advertiser said, that's it, you know, you know. And and I always lived on kind of that edge because I, I used to have comics on the show all the time. And, and who do comics go after but institutions? And what more is an institution than some of the advertisers that we had, you know, whether of it was course, McDonald's yeah. or, or or Carl's Jr. or whatever, you know. Um, and you know, and and advertisers are a very, they were a, a very scared bunch of people, you know. They didn't want any controversy. They didn't want no, anything. They don't. They don't want to offend anybody. So they, yeah, no right, chance. right. They, they, and so if if for instance. Uh, Carl's Jr. got some letters once from some people uh, saying that I had said something terrible or whatever, and so they canceled, literally canceled. I remember that, yeah. And it turned out that, you know, I we said, well, what, what did Alex say? And they said, well, these letters say he said blah, blah, blah. And I, How many of them did you get? He said, like 50 of them. And so we hired a private detective. Because I hadn't said any of this. We hired a private detective to go out and try and find out where all these letters were coming from. And he, 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 was, like, he was like the big, big, best private detective in San Francisco. And he was notoriously well known. And I'm trying to remember his name now. And he went out and he found out it was all one guy. But that he literally went to California, to Nevada, up into Oregon, and mailed the letters from these various places. Really? Wow. Yeah, yeah he cool. really, and we found him, and finally the detective went down, knocked on his door, and said, listen, we know you've been sending these letters. And the guy's like, who? And he said, you continue to do this, and we're going to file a legal action against you. And they stopped immediately. But in the meantime, we still had lost Carl's Jr., so my boss uh, uh, at the time, Ed Cramp, said to me, Alex, sick him. I, and I said, what do you mean by that? And he said, go after Carl's Jr. <laughs> so I went on the air and I told everybody about the Carl's Jr. thing, right? And said, those son of bitches, I, you know, they quit advertising here not knowing if these letters were even real or not. And... 
all of a sudden one day I get a call from, hi, this is so-and-so. I own all the Carl's Jr. franchises in the Bay Area. Uh, what is this problem? And I told him, and he said, listen, I, my daughter and I listen to you driving to work every day when I'm taking her to school. We love your show. Let me call Carl Karcher. So he calls Carl Karcher and says, you put those ads back on the air right now. You're killing my business. And within a day, the advertising was back on the station. Yeah, I remember when they came back. That was, uh, And it was God. like, it was my biggest victory against an advertiser. Hey, look, I just looked at the clock. 25 minutes have flown. Just flown, flown by. Flown by when you're talking about things. When Carl so Jr. and mattresses. <laughs> Do it again next week. You got it. Larry Bubbles Brown. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, hello, everybody. Here we are now. Uh, we're going full bore with our uh, video and so on. And uh, it's time for you to uh, call us as well. Let me uh, first get rid of this. I got to get that rid of that. And then I got to bring up uh, Skype. And then I got I to gotta turn on Skype. I love you, Skype. That's how you turn on Skype. It gets very, they get, it gets very, they get very hot uh, when, they, when you say, I love you, Skype. And anyway, so, uh, oh, hey, I, I, you know something? I, I, let, me, let me adjust my, uh, my picture here. Uh, uh, because my picture is, uh, I, I, I forget to readjust it uh, when I r redo the whole thing, and I got to, like, undo the focus. Otherwise, I keep going in and out of focus as it tries to focus. And then I kind of zoom the picture in a little bit. There we go. All right, and then you're not going to see my underpants, and then I go apply, and I go, okay, and I go, uh, okay, and then I, watch, watch me change my picture. Here we go. Ready? Um, oh, I guess it just did it anyway. Oh, okay, fine. Anyway, we're, we're ready, and we're ready to have you call. The lines are open. Let's see if anybody does call. This is the point in the show in which I have this recurring nightmare that I'm going to go to the phones and then uh, phones to Skype, right? And if you want, if you literally want to go to the phones, you can do it by uh, uh, going to gabnet.net and the phone number's there. Hey, look, somebody, somebody who has been with us before, uh, and uh, here she is, uh, Marcella Roberts. Hello, Marcella. Are you there? Hi. Hi, can you see my camera this time? No, you got to tur turn it off and then turn uh -huh. it back on again. I think that might make it work. Okay. Yeah, that's going to Oh, there you are. What 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 are you doing? Are you actually <laughs> blue screen do using a blue screen? I am using a green screen. A green I, screen. I took Phil's idea and I wanted to try it. Wow. <laughs> You're going to make Phil Meyer jealous. Yeah. We'll see. Maybe he'll pop up on with his. What are you What are you using to do that? Although it is kind of you have a lot of fringing and stuff like that. But what are you using to yeah. do? Yeah, it. it's called X. Oh, good grief. Uh, X split. Oh. Yeah, X split. Yeah, yeah. I was looking at that last <laughs> night, as a matter of fact. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Here comes Phil. See, she's got a blue screen or a green screen. Oh. Uh. Oh, is that a green screen? Yeah. Very. How did, how did she get it? What kind of software did she use to get it to work? XSplit. Hey, say it again? XSplit. XSplit. Very nice. Well, it's yeah, a, I it's, tried Pinnacle and it didn't work with Skype. Oh, uh, you tried pin, Pinnacle? What is, yeah. what is Pinnacle? I'm not familiar with that. Um, it's a video editing software. Yeah. It's pretty nice. Yeah. But it doesn't uh, interface with Skype. Yeah, what do, what do I hear in back? Do you have an air conditioner on or something? Yeah, let me go fix that. Well, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to make you go all sweaty on me, you know. But no, it's okay. It's okay. It's getting late. Yeah, that's yeah. Ex exploit. E Exploit. Ex exploit. X and then S P L I T. Yeah, I I installed it last night, but I didn't like it for what I. Oh. For what I needed right. for there. Well, see, now, see her green screen. Green screen. And, uh, Is it still oh. loud? Yeah. There you go. 
Is that better? Okay, yeah. I have a server running too. Yeah. So if it still gets loud, I can turn that off. Okay, but that's fine. Just get close enough to the microphone that, you know. Better? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. So anyway, so are you jealous, Phil? Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I know it's got issues. Yeah, well, it's, uh, I guess you need a different light. You got to light the screen a little bit more so that you separate yourself, right? Yeah. Yeah. I got a kit. It came with four lights, but wow. um, everything was lit better a couple hours ago, but then the sun went down. <laughs> <laughs> I have to relight now, them. Now, why, why did you decide on that background? Um, this is Twin Peaks. I live really close to the city, and so this is the roadhouse in. Um, I have a video, an image of one um, with water moving, mm -hmm. and I was going to use that one, but um, just kind of about a half hour ago, it started getting real fuzzy, so, so I switched it out. So how much of it in back of you is the green screen? Um, I'll show you. Or the size of your green screen. Uh, oh, I, uh, see, I see. You're just using it just a little bit, and then it, it just cuts in. I see. Okay, fine. You know. Yeah. Hell, I'll probably have a green screen going before Phil ever does. I I, I think so. I, you know, I'm still trying to uh, eliminate some files from my computer so I can reinstall my Color Monkey. Are you still doing the Color Monkey deal? Yeah, because yeah. you know what happens is every time I ask a question of X Right, uh, it takes them a day to respond. So oh, I, I ask a question, I get an answer. Yeah. They gave me a list of things yeah. to do, but I don't know how to find them yet. So hey. I'm going to have to ask somebody to help me. Scott, turn your camera on and off. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah, there you go. There's, it. there, Scott. there's our, our favorite guy. I say that Where's while she? Phil's around, so he feels bad. What? <laughs> that photo from her in her green sc screen. That looks nice. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Yeah. 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 It's the Roadhouse Inn from Twin Peaks. Yeah. Oh, okay. Is Twin Peaks the TV show or Twin Peaks on uh, uh, above Market Street in San Francisco? The TV show. It's Fall oh. City, Washington. I yeah. see. Uh huh. Uh, and, and we've been joined by Rob. Hello, Rob. Oops, there you go. I was, How's it going? I was thinking of you today because I was watching uh, uh, CNN's doing this series, the 90s. You know how they've done, they did the 80s, they did the 60s, you know, they're doing the 90s now. Yeah. And uh, they did the, the uh, from Twin Peaks. Yeah, and they did uh, they did uh, the um, what 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 is that noise? Something's and, uh, uh, what, have you got something on, Kevin? Have you got something on? Kevin, can you hear us, Kevin? Kevin, can you hear us? Kevin, can you hear us? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, you had uh, something on there for a second, yep. but you're okay now. Yeah, I'm anyway, sorry. I, I what was I was going to say, what mind. I was trying to say to Rob was, and and they went and they did the OJ trial was part of this, this, '90s, oh, thing, yeah. mm -hmm. and because it was all about race, and all I could think of was you working at that time, for, uh, Court TV, TV, right? right? Yep. And mm -hmm. your your involvement in that trial. Yeah, it was my life for what about it? Eighteen months? Really, that much? Yeah. It, from the time, because remember, we covered it from we covered it from right after the, uh, the the slow speed chase all the way through to the verdict and all that. So, oh, Rob, yeah, what, what was your all the uh, function? Connection. What was your I was function? A, oh. I was a director, so I was directing a lot of the coverage. I see. Uh, you know, uh, Alex, you were having a lot of cat discussions uh, earlier with Bubbles, yeah. and I think yeah. I remember who took Shabbos to the to the vet for you. Uh, uh, the guy who owns Bam Magazine has a brother. Yes. Uh, okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm trying to I'm trying to remember his name now. Uh, yeah, Eric. It's, it's like, it, well, huh? Dennis Eric is the. Yeah, but uh, his brother and his brother was is whoever Eric and I forget. He now. was a chubbier kind of guy. Yeah. 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 Okay. I, I think it was him. Good. Thanks for bringing back bad Never memories or something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, you know, you, you, you've been racking your brain if it was yeah. me, but I think it's because I was there the same day he came back. Yeah. Uh, and he was at the table and we were chatting. Uh, the cat tomorrow is going to be picked up by her owner. 
And yeah. we're thinking, we're considering uh, hijacking the cat and moving to Canada. <laughs> uh, we've gotten that stuck on that cat, you know, which yeah. was kind of nice. Uh, but the cat, uh, the, the, the cat goes back tomorrow. She got, she's gotten very precocious. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I have the door here in the studio that I keep closed. Last night she pushed it open to get in. You know? And turn it up. And then she has this laser pointer thing that we do that she loves. You know, cats go crazy over laser pointers. And she knows it, what it is. If you hold it, if you pick it up and hold it in your yep. hand, she's like a dog waiting for you to throw a stick. Just yeah. looking around, right? Yeah, waiting she, she's like, waiting. You know, yeah. So last night I go out there and then we've also got a thing of like little treats for her, little, I don't know, whatever they are. It's a kitty heroin or something. I don't know. You know, and uh, I go out there and what's lying on the floor below the counter, the laser and the and and the treats as though she was trying to give me a hint. Right. So I left them there for Marjorie this morning and she went crazy over that. And the cat. And then we talked to the she wrote, the, you know, the woman who owns the cat and the woman said, Oh, yeah, she does that at home, too. She just knocks these things off the counter. So uh, she's a very, you know, she, she's smart. She's a smart cat. She's a calculating cat, you know. She knows when to not pay attention to you, so you'll pay attention to her, you know. Look at me. I'm talking like a proud father. It's, it's, uh, it's quite an experience. I, like I said, I was never a cat guy. Now I got two of them, and... And I've had I've been a I've had dogs most of my life, and I really am enjoying the cat experience much more. Well, you know, thing is though that what scares me a little bit is that I've I've had these I've been uh, these scary feelings about the cat because I was afraid maybe I just might go crazy and hurt the cat or do something. You know, <laughs> I mean we are in an eighth story window. I could just throw her out the window or something like that. And I'm going, what's keeping me from doing that? And I keep getting paranoid about that. Sanix. She'll yeah. land on her feet. Huh? No, uh, and, land, I, and I it'll think it'll land on its foot. Uh, yeah, I think. I think what it is 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 that I've been given a real. We've been given a real responsibility here. This isn't like our cats, you know. Somebody else's cat, and we mm. better return this cat in the same shape we got the cat in. And it it's so in that respect, it's been a real uh, uh, pressure. Because the cat likes to, I was saying to, to Bubbles, the cat lo loves to go over to the window where they, we have a screen in the windows now and look out the window. But I don't know that she's going to see a bird go by and just, you know, push out the, the, uh, the uh, thing. So I, you know, I, so I put a towel over the window so she couldn't look out that window. So she went to another radiator, stood on it and looked out the window, you know. Pretty smart. They're pretty, they're pretty smart. She I, can open the door. Yeah. She could probably open the screen. Oh, no, you know what I did? I put the towel up and I stapled it around, okay? Because these staples come out easily. And I didn't do it right, like right at the bottom. And when she found she couldn't look out the window, she started pawing into the opening to try and pull the towel off. I mean, uh, uh, what kind that's of. That's a smart. Th uh, that's yeah, a smart they like cat. It. What? They like. What'd you say? They like to be in. They like to be in high places and look at shit. Yeah. They like to be in high places. They also like cover, like under yeah. the bed, under the table. You know, uh, ours will jump up onto the counter and then in the kitchen and jump up onto the top of the cabinets and just hang out up there. And then we got a skylight type window, and that sucker will go up into that. And then come down and jump across to the other cabinets and then work his way down. Well, well you know what happens, what happens here? It's like, finally, I let her into the office. I said, you know, I was off the air. It doesn't matter. She can put her feet on the, on the keyboards and who cares what happens, right? She comes in. She had to look <laughs> at every inch of this room. She had to inspect it. Oh, it's yeah. almost as though... If I have now inspected it, it's mine. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I mean, she How was, much longer? Uh, How much longer are you going to have her? Uh, tomorrow, the, uh, I, uh, her mommy is coming to pick her up. 
Oh. And, oh. And, Separation anxiety. Oh, we are going to... Already, girlfriend is saying, let's get a kitty. Yeah. yeah. Let, let's get two. You know, and I'm thinking... We got to put. Should. We, we got to borrow that kitty on a regular basis. We got to buy some new screens for the window, uh, windows, and and we'd have to, you know, we'd have to uh, suicide proof the apartment from the cats. You know. <laughs> well, it's only we when they're kittens. Adopt a cat. Huh? Maybe not a maybe not a kitten, but a cat. Yeah. Well, I, I, you know, I, yeah, I was thinking about a like a rescue, you know. <laughs> Uh, something, well, you know, because my problem is, is that at my age, you know, I don't know that I'm going to live to be 15 more years or that I'm going to live another year, you know. So if, let's say, we're gone in a couple of years, where do these cats live? So I want to get a, maybe a rescue cat who's a little bit older and, uh, you yeah. know, like maybe get a cat who's 19 years old. And... Uh, <laughs> Oh come on! And won't keep you looking up, at me every. Up, uh, won't keep looking at me every day, going, "Hey, uh, pal, uh, you know, I'm gonna be here after you're gone." <laughs> yeah, then you'll start a death pool. Who's gonna go first? Yeah, right, right, <laughs> right. Kittens are rough. Having a kitten is. Uh, you've got to run around after kittens. They require a lot no, of time. But a two, yeah. three year old cat, they they're already to the point where they. They're smart enough not to jump out a window because they, you know, kittens yeah. are rambunctious. They'll do yeah. anything. Well, I've seen... But an adult cat, you know, they're, they get, they're, they're not so stupid. Well, they're I, pretty I, smart. I, 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 you know, kittens uh, probably uh, get like football brain injuries when they're kittens because they keep slamming into walls. I don't oh, know how they survive. They tumble they over. Um, uh, but, you know, I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I just don't know if I'm ready to have a cat at this point. I mean, I love cats. Yes, uh, yes, Mike. My kitten loves to go across the floor, runs, goes across the anoleum, just to watch his body. Yeah. It's like a big, like a Mack truck in yeah. slow motion. Runs off the staircase, meows, looks at the floor, like, okay, I'm not going to do that again. Stupid. Doesn't yeah, it we, yet? Yeah, but you want yeah. to know something about this? This cat is going to miss something. Going to miss the size of the apartment because the apartment she's going back to is like a one-bedroom apartment. In this oh. apartment, she could start at one end and yeah. run at top speed down the hallway to the other end, and she did that too. She does that. She does that when I'm trying to go to sleep. I hear this galloping cat, you know. Uh, and so I don't. I you know that that's probably part of the separation anxiety she's going to get from us. So. Anyway, it's been a, it's been a wonderful thing, and we're gonna miss her. And you know, it's been like ten days now. Ten days? Oh, ten days as of uh, I think today we have made it ten wow. days. Wow. Well, let me. Let me... We, left our, we left our two fourteen pounders in the house for the last twelve days by themselves. Oh, really? There was parties going on and everything. Yeah, you're 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 breaking up a little bit. I don't know what. Where did everybody it is. go? Your picture is fine. Are you guys cutting out real bad? No, well, you you you, know, you are. It's your internet connection. What? Yeah. I'm gonna hang up and re, re, reconnect here. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you do that? You know. Okay. Because we'd love to hear what you got to say. Um, uh, let me let me let me tell you about something that. Uh, uh, in fact, I'll get rid of them here. Hold on. There we go. All right. Let me see here. Get rid of Kevin's picture. There we go. Remove from this group. There we go. Okay. Um, so I, uh, I oh here he comes again. Okay, add to group. Okay, and uh, let's see if Kevin just pops in. How are you now, Kevin? Can you hear us? Okay. He's frozen. <laughs> hey, you're still bouncing around. I'll tell Where you what. I'll tell you what you do. Let's hang up. Reboot your computer. Yeah, reboot. I, I, I'd say reboot his modem. Uh, well, I can't hear you. Uh, why don't can you hear me now? Yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'll be back. Okay. All right. I'll be back. Okay. Uh, gee, I, I, I like having him around, but he usually gets a pretty good signal to us. So you know. Anyway, I'll tell you what happened to me uh, in the last couple of days. So I, uh, my doctor, uh, gave me this prescription for a thing called Zetia, and Zetia enhances statins because he found that I had. A really high level of you know cholesterol which I finally figured out what it probably was caused by 
because I, as I was checking out all the pills that I have in the house, I had one bottle more than I should have of my cholesterol drug. So I think during that month, I didn't take it. For, I forgot to put it in with all my other pills, and I didn't take it. And so that's why my cholesterol went high. So he gave me the Zetia because he says it'll lower your cholesterol by 20 more percent. Okay, so good, fine. Zetia, $10 a month copay, right? So all of a sudden, they I get a thing from the pharmacy saying, your doctor has to approve, has to call them and get a, an exception or whatever you call that thing. You know what I'm talking about? Where, where you get the okay. Get an okay or something from the insurance company to pay for it. So uh, I, uh, I finally get my doctor to do that. And uh, uh, all of a sudden I look online and they've approved it and they, they're processing it and you can come get your pills. And I look at the price and it's gone from $10 to $31.47. So Ouch. I call up the pharmacy and I say, what, what, $31.47? She says, yeah, that's the price they're saying it, it, they're charging now. So I said, uh, how could I do this cheaper? She says, uh, the uh, generic would probably be cheaper. And I said, oh, okay, well, uh, why don't you check the generic? So she checks the generic and he, he says, oh, my God. I said, what? She says, you the don't. generic is $75. What? Oh, I've yes. never seen that. I've never seen that. That's crazy. I know it's crazy. That's insane. So then I called Oxford, and, I told, and I told him about this, and I said, you know, this drug is costing, uh, it now is, is, went up to $31.47 from $10, and they went, yeah, what happens is occasionally we readjust the prices because we feel that you're not paying enough or something. So yeah, exactly. So I, she said, "Why don't you use the generic?" I said, "I got news for you about the generic. Supposedly, it costs more than 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 Zetia costs than the non-generic." And she says, "Come on, that can't be." I said, "Check the price on it." So she says, "Hold on," and she checks the price on the generic. And guess what? She comes back and goes, I can't believe this. She says the generic <laughs> is seventy five dollars. And that's with that's that's the copay for the generic. Jeez. Is that thirty days supply or three months? Thirty days supply. Jesus. Who could afford that on a fixed income? Well, I'm on a fixed income and I guess I'm gonna have to, otherwise I die. Jeez. You know. Nope. But I mean, is, Phil, Phil, your guys are at work on a health care bill. Maybe they could fix that. Yeah, maybe they can fix that. Well, you know, it, it's yeah, an open it's an open slate right now, and uh, everybody's going to get a chance to uh, oh, put yeah. their two cents oh, yeah. in. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. I doubt that. Uh, except you the, know what uh, I loved Democrat, it. What I loved it to... is they hold this big vote today, which is a vote <clears throat> about nothing in particular. It's a vote just to say we'll talk about it. <laughs> Right, that, and they were patting themselves and on I mean, the back. And, for that and one. John McCain comes from a sick bed or whatever to 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 appear, so he can vote for talking about something that none of these people know what they're going to be talking about because there's no plan. Well, so well, what McCain was said if the plan is what it is now, he won't vote for it. Right, right, right. But at the rate they're he going, he no. But you know something? I'll tell you this, Marcella. At the rate he's they're going and getting this bill out, he won't be around to vote for it. You know? Did you see That'll his forehead? Yeah, he wasn't going to get a term limit off the cocksuckers. Hey, the yeah. North Vietnamese couldn't beat him up like those doctors did in Arizona. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know something? You have a brain operation, Phil, and you're going to have a scar, you know? If you have a brain. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you yeah, know. God, hope, hope the fuck, Christ, you never get sent to the hospital for that, Phil. As yeah. Republicans go, he's got the biggest brain I've seen in a while. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that was a positive yeah. well, or Well, he, 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 he took the whole Senate to task when he gave he that did. speech today. You know, basically Both saying, sides. yeah, yeah, saying you guys are just sitting here doing nothing, you know, and getting nothing you know, he, done. Yeah. What, Marcel? Yeah. He always says the right thing and he always votes party line. 
he, so yeah, not necessarily. You know. Well, he yeah, does, he does. He does vote. He does. He for the most part votes party. He's been a very staunch Republican. Okay, and he he's been against Trump a lot, and but he hasn't voted for any of these these bills that they've yes, tried. Yes, he has. To, but the but Republican he, uh, the yes. healthcare. Yeah, he speaks out against them, and then he votes for them. Well, he he. No, I didn't in, know that. Well, wait a minute. I, I, I yeah, he. I think was not one of the people who didn't vote for it when they tried to pass the most recent version of it. Oh. That, that may be, but there have been a lot of votes where he's spoken out against them, yeah. and he sounds very moderate <clears throat> Republican. He actually, he actually, he for fun. years was considered a liberal Republican, uh, and and that's why I always kind of liked the guy, you know. Especially in 2000 against George W. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, he's he, he's always been fairly <clears throat> out, outspoken. And the only time he ever really sold out was when he was running for president. And no then way. he was just, yeah. you know, I was very disappointed yeah. in him. Yeah. You know. I think he would have picked Lieberman for, as a VP. Uh, yeah. uh, he he might have won. He might have won with Lieberman? Nah. Lieber, yeah, Lieber, yeah. Lieberman, <clears throat> yeah. Mr. <clears throat> Mr. Charisma. Hi, Kevin. I think everything sounds fine now, right, Kevin? Kevin, can you hear us? Uh, maybe not. Can you hear us? You're having trouble tonight? Yeah, but it's broken up. Quite a... Yeah, but I... It's we... broken up. Well, you're, you're, you're a little bit better. Why don't you just stick around and see if it gets better? Sometimes it yeah, clears up. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Once my daughter quits playing Minecraft, maybe it'll get better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens. Yeah. Yeah, bandwidth's hard to come by in this house. Yeah, bandwidth is dependent upon your daughter's uh, uh, ability. She's got three damn devices going, for Christ's sakes. It really? Oh, that's what's using up all your fucking bandwidth. Tell her to quit playing. <laughs> tell her to go to bed. What time is it? No, it's... <laughs> I told you, it's a, I, ten minutes, you're off. I still see the sun is out, so where you are, Jeez. so yeah, California, yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Um, but anyway, um, uh, you know, he he kind of read the riot act to them. I didn't hear that much of it, but what I heard, he was just saying, I'm just disappointed in the way this Congress has been reacting and how it's been comporting itself. And I, you know, I think he's absolutely right. Um, they're uh, they're really a bunch of I mean idiots on both sides. I what, what I blame the Democrats for is not playing hardball hard enough. You know, I mean, how dare? Uh, and a lot of that I would argue is because they're the Democrats, the especially the corporate neoliberal Democrats, your Pelosi's and your and your and your Levins, are in this are have the same uh, contributors, financial backers that the Republicans do. Yeah, Your limousine limousine elites. You know, that's what you they. Know, I, I, I'm not going to argue with Phil on that because I, I happen to agree for, to a great yeah. extent yeah. for a different reason, albeit, but yeah. slightly different reason. Yeah. Not. And I think a lot of what's going on was brought upon brought upon us by the Democrats, unfortunately. They jammed Obamacare down the throats of the Republicans and turned about as fair play. And now we're in this tit-for-tat thing where nobody wants to work with anybody else. The Democrats did it first. Now the Republicans are going to do it. So that means the next time the Democrats, the Democrats are in charge, they're going to do it. it was the Republicans. How, 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 uh, they... they they jammed Obamacare down the throats of the of the Republicans. How did just they the way, do that? How did they just do that? by having by having the um, the, the majority in uh, you know the first couple of years, they no, pushed it no. through. No, they needed uh, they needed Republican to vote it for it too. The the gal from uh, Olympia from uh, Maine, she had I to vote no. for it. Uh, Snow, it, Olympia Snow. Uh, they, and they needed 60 votes to do it also. 60. And they took a year and a half to do it, and then they asked the Republicans, please come help us write a good bill. They refused. You know, they, they, would, need, they would need 60 votes if they didn't accept the uh, congressional bill. Because uh, I, uh, I think the congressional bill allowed them to get less votes if i heard the news to, something uh, about reconciliation or whatever i didn't quite understand it either yeah oh. yeah 
uh, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it was a, uh, a fairly big news day. You, know, you, you yeah, had that anyway. vote. Yeah. You had McCain back in the Senate. Uh, and, uh, you know, maybe it was a wake-up call. I sent you, uh, Alex, a, uh, an article from the Village Voice uh, uh, that I think the attitude of people is changing now. And that, uh, you know, maybe it's time that they started working together. Uh, it was an interesting article. Well, I'll tell you. I, Wait a minute. Change, was, change. Oh, oh, go ahead, Kevin. Yeah, I was, I was on a, a road trip for the last 12 days. And uh, going from through Nevada up to Wyoming, up to Idaho and Oregon, ending up in Oregon. I don't know. Can you guys hear me or not? We can, yeah. we can hear you okay, yeah. Hello? Yeah, we, yeah. Can, we can hear yeah. you okay. Uh, this thing's crapping out again. Damn. Uh, well, your picture is, is, is your, freezing your picture, a little bit. Your, pic- can, your, yeah. your audio is fine. You're, you may want okay. to try turning off your video and just using your audio until your, yeah, video, until your bandwidth gets better. Yeah, maybe. Here, just but anyway, I was like I was saying, uh, you know, I have friends that were Republicans in the, in the deep part of uh, Wyoming and, and uh, Idaho. And as I got towards Oregon, you know, you got the... the the liberals and the Democrats up there, but the pulse that I read just from these people that were staunch Trump supporters, they're not real pleased. They're they're still. It seems like whoever just said that a few minutes ago that that the the support is is fading a little bit because I think they everybody agrees that there's nothing getting done with all the bullshit that's going on. Well, I think they're also are they starting to get the feeling that. Maybe they're in trouble when it comes to health care. I mean, yeah, the, exactly. Yeah. And, and these guys are people, just starting yeah, Medicare of, and finishing up with Obamacare and the whole bit. <clears throat> yeah. I, a lot I, of people who voted who, who didn't know the difference between the, the Affordable Care Act and Obamacare. So yeah. you know. I, I don't think that uh, his base is getting disenfranchised. I think they're getting tired of all the bullshit that's going on. And and the uh, stalemate that uh, seems to be uh, going on uh, in the legislature. I disagree. I disagree with that because I think I think uh, they're standing behind them. Pretty, you know. I heard an interview with a couple of them. They they look at this whole thing, and maybe you do as well, Phil. That um, that that it's just an attack on them more than it is an attack on Trump. No, I, I, I see this as an attack I, on them. Um, I see it as a bunch of children that had a 12 percent approval rating and uh, they're they still think that people like them just because they vote for them. They vote. No, for no, no, them. No, I'm, I'm not talking about the, the legislature. I'm talking about the voters. There are well, rumors. There are rumors that there are some senators and congressmen who aren't going to go home for the summer. They're going to go somewhere else for vacation rather than go home and have to deal with their constituents. You blame them? Bullshit, though. Yes, they, I do blame those. You shouldn't they're, get reelected if you do that. Yeah. Well, I don't Your think fucking anyone job should get elected. Go the fuck home. Yeah. Marcella, how do you feel about all this? You're quiet, and I, I, I know that because you don't do this that often, you don't know how to tell Phil to shut the fuck up and say something. So. <laughs> no, um, I have a lot of family that is uh, that are Republicans, a lot like Phil, and a lot of them still like Trump. They think that um, their retirement funds are doing really well. They think that um, there's nothing going on with Russia, that it's a big um, piece of art, that it's not true. Mm-hmm. And, and I would not be surprised if we have them for another four years. Well. Personally, <laughs> I don't believe any of I don't. I, I believe that there's a lot of there with Russia. And I don't want to see him another four years, but, um, you know, that is what I hear. Yeah, well, you know, the thing is that um, I, I just don't think that the um, uh, that even though they, they feel that way now, that as time goes on, I, I just can't see how they, if they are intelligent on any level, can countenance yeah. the way this man is comporting himself. Uh, but they're watching different things than we're watching. Where they're listening to different things. They're watching Fox twenty four seven. Yeah. Uh, 
You're listening to AM radio. They are talking with each other, just like we're talking with each other. Yeah. They're talking with each other. They're not hearing the rest. Yeah. Uh, 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 Rob, did you hear the part today with uh, McCain when he talked about AM radio? Talked about radio yes. and, yeah. and television talk shows and how they yep. completely have, have 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 ginned up this whole situation. Good. I actually thought his speech was phenomenal. It was. It was. It was. Yeah, I, it was. I thought he was basically was. telling us to get in and do something and sit, sit down, and shut up, and get your work done. Yeah, was basically what he was saying, and that 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 needed to be said. Yep. Yeah, but then you add to that what the president is doing, and and he's he's messing with Sessions. Uh, yeah, and he's the, got Republicans. He's got because he wants he wants Sessions to take charge of this investigation, and he wants him to do something with Mueller, and he's recused himself, and so he feels unprotected, and he wants him to quit is what he would prefer. But here's the otherwise thing. he's going to eventually fire him, and then he's going to put somebody in there who he knows will fire. Mueller, and if, that'll if, be the if beginning you, of the end. If, 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 you're, if, you're, if you're Trump and you're not guilty of anything, why should you give a rat's ass how Absolutely. this thing That's true. That's true. plays Absolutely. itself out? You shouldn't that care about true. Sessions. You shouldn't you're, care about you're Mueller. Assuming, you're assuming it's Russia. But I, no, but no, I'm not assuming anything. Quitting. I'm not it assuming Russia, anything. Man. I'm saying that why is he so set on making these people bend to his way what is he afraid of? He is afraid of something. He should open all the doors of the White House and say, come on in. And then, and Have then a look. Go, there is nothing here. Then let's get on get with the peach. business of running the country. He's going to get impeached. He's going to get impeached. He can go about his freaking work. If he's he got let, nothing to hide, he can go about his work. I, I don't know. I know that there's an investigation I, I, going on. And then when it's over, it's over. Yeah. Tony, you have your hand up. Yeah. We were just saying, like, that's the only thing that alarms me, like you just said. If there was nothing there, he's going to fire another guy that just got hired? Here's a question. if they, Let's say they're getting dangerously close to getting his tax records, like you said. Do you think there's a chance that Trump just resigns before they get close? No, I don't think. Look, I think that no. the thing that Trump doesn't want is for people to find out that as a billionaire, he's been a fraud all these years, that he really isn't as wealthy as he acts like he is, and that uh, the, the numbers don't add up, and that he, he's try, he, he doesn't want anybody to see his taxes. You know, he didn't pay taxes for, what, nine years, I think? Or, no, 19, I think, was, was it 19? 19 years. Was it 19 years, yeah, because he took a loss on the casinos which then, of course, the real loss went to the investors, not him. But he somehow managed to scam the system where for the next 19 years he didn't have to pay any personal taxes. I mean, do, do you really want to see all, does he really want, maybe this is what he doesn't want to have come out. Mike, you have your hand up. I think Trump is, that's what, I, you hit it right there, Alex. Trump is scared. Because if they get their tax, it is their the government's gonna get their uh, the investigators gonna get their little hands on his taxes, mm -hmm. and Trump's not gonna you know she's gonna say, well they have no right to do that, baloney, and I believe that he's gonna get impeached. No, he's There's not gonna. I don't, I don't think. Get look, 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 Mike. I think you better uh, just uh, get rid of that notion that he's gonna get impeached. No, I, I don't think I don't think impeachment. It, to begin with, impeachment is well. Impeachment itself is not as difficult, but to get him out of office uh, by finding him guilty of the impeachable offense is going to be almost damn near impossible. You're going to need a Democratic okay. Congress. You're going to need a Democratic Congress, and then again, as Will Durr said, the question is: do you, do, 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 do you try him as a child? Uh, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> if, if he goes as far as firing Mueller, he's pissing off a lot of Republicans. He's gonna if he fires M Sessions to get to Mueller, and he fires Mueller, he's gonna piss off a lot of Republicans at that point. And you're gonna see, then the possibilities of impeachment because then it becomes more like what happened to Nixon. You know what, what did they call that? The uh, massacre, the Saturday Night Massacre. Yeah. Yeah. It becomes, you know, that's when the Republicans finally started saying, we need to do something about this guy. Uh, it, yeah. No, you're right. 
You're right. But the question is what, where, when, how? You know? I mean, how do you how do you feel as a Republican if Sessions was the first Republican senator to back Trump? Here, here's the, the here's the part I can't believe. Else, he I put hate himself out there. I hate being put in the position of having to defend Sessions. I know. <laughs> you know, exactly. I mean, <laughs> that, that, that's the part that gets to me. You know, and and, and the fact of the matter is. Here is a guy. How do you how do you justify this, Phil? I want to I want to I want to hear this justification. The, here is a guy, tr Donald Trump, who demands loyalty from his troops. Right? Am I correct about that? We always hear about that. It appears that way. Yeah, it appears that way. It, it is that way. With Comey, he said, "I want you. You have to be loyal to me." You know, and yet, and yet, yet it doesn't go the uh, it doesn't go the other way around. He's not loyal to anybody. Absolutely. You know, but he's, he's he's guiding the ship, and no, 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 wait a minute, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. But how do you how do you equate him wanting this loyalty and then not giving it back? It's very simple. Hmm. Uh, you know, uh, business uh, is is like a, a river with a bunch of canoes going in different directions, and yeah. the people in your canoe have to paddle the same way you want the canoe to go. Otherwise. You pull it over to the shore, uh, yeah, yeah, you let it yeah. get out. Uh, and get uh, it's a very opposite. nice tale you're telling us, but this ain't no canoe and this isn't any river. Yes, Rob. It's not a business. Phil, you're, exactly, you're, you're, Phil you're 100% right when you're talking yes. about business. Yes. But you're right. not talking about business. You're talking right. about government. And we, government is about politics. And what does politics mean? In politics means it's a it's a it's it's been long too long uh, a political game and I I elected a no, guy no 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 wrong about that oh yeah I want him to run business like like uh, I want him to run government like a business it's not well, a business well it, it's not, not a, a business, business is a dictatorship I voted, him to, I voted for him to run it that way but a business is a dictatorship. The CEO is the dictator. The CEO is the dictator, yes, and everybody else underneath him has to carry out the plan or leave. Right. That's and, business. And, and, that's a dictatorship. And in the executive so branch, in the executive branch, that's the way it should run. But we, the Kane said today, we have checks and balances. We we are as he said his Senate uh, is just as strong as as the president. No, he didn't say that. He said the, just as important. Just as important. Okay. So. Uh, bottom line is, if the you know the Senate is a hundred people trying to make a decision, the executive branch is one person that has appointed people that are supposed to paddle in the same direction as him. And even R Ryan said that these people serve at his uh, discretion, and if he doesn't want them there, he can get rid of them. And and uh, Ryan's right, and I believe I I, I agree with him. Tony, can I? I'm trying to understand what Foot Phil just said. Isn't that why we're in this predicament? Because everybody's always voting company line? No, we're in this predicament, Tony, because everybody's playing politics. Yeah, but if you want everybody to well, vote the same said. way, you're not really solving well, it. Well, then I... Like, uh, yeah. Rob's trying to say, if you have yeah. your own thought with him, you're fired. I would, well, you I would, suggest, I would suggest, Phil, that if you don't want anybody to play politics and we dissolve the government... Okay. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, 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 Mike has his hand up. You know, Phil, what Trump's doing, every way he turns around, he hires somebody to do this thing. Next thing you know, he's fired. What is this? Is he running this like a like a CEO of a business? No, he's, run, he's, not? he's running it like The Apprentice. Yeah, I, exactly. He, next thing you know, like, Phil, next, you're fired. Next you're thing hired. you're going to know, he's hey. going to send the entire cabinet out to compete at selling cookies. Hey, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Man, that's front, he's, he, Trump, Trump is a dictator. That's all he is. I want him to run it like a business, and I want him to run his branch like a business. And if his branch... Bullshit! Like, Excuse well, me. That's hey, bull. You know, hey, uh, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. You've had the uh, man doesn't have 75 all marbles. years of this kind of bickering and partisan uh, much? that's been going on. And long, it's about at least 50 to 75 years. That's uh, not true at all. That's not true at all. It's 15 years since 9-11. No, everything no, has no. Gotten it's been going on since uh, since, since uh, uh, Hoover. And, no, no, oh, no, uh, no. Then apparently you weren't paying attention to politics because I remember a time when I, in growing up, 
where politicians did get along with each other and did cooperate for the betterment of the uh, of, of yes, the country. Yes, George Washington was president when you were growing up. Oh, Come on, did, did you hear? Did you hear? Of, did you hear how you got a laugh on that one, Phil? Hey, hey, hey. hey you you had to, you had to hold it. You had to use your mute button. <laughs> you know, it's even funnier than what Phil said. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's that tough. was funny. Yeah. 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 I think uh, it started when Obama became president and they decided that they were going to obstruct anything that he does. Didn't you remember what obstruct. happened what happened with Bush? You know, uh, worse under Obama, we, but I think it, By the way, by the way, just as a side note, last night I'm watching my favorite show right now, Preacher. I don't yes. know if anybody's watching Preacher. Did, yeah. you, did you hear the line last night, uh, Scott? They're watching. They're watching this show in which uh, it's about the uh, the uh, saint of killers, and yes. about his history and about how he you know his kids, his wife and daughter died, and then he he so he wanders the earth without a soul, and they say uh, next week on America's worst predators, Dick Cheney. Yes, yes, that's good. That was good. That was funny. Yeah. Uh, you know, no I, soul. he he doesn't just have a he just doesn't have a heart. That's what he he's got a soul maybe. But no, he doesn't heart. have a soul. It, it, they oh. said he doesn't have a soul, and that's what uh, the preacher is trying to go do is find him a soul. So and he finds him enough well, of no. a soul that he well, can. No, no, I, I was talking about Dick Cheney. Oh, Dick. Oh, oh. Uh, about Dick Cheney. One of the funniest things I saw on YouTube was when uh, two things I thought thought were funny. One was on YouTube where uh, he's being interviewed. I guess not long after Katrina occurred and this was uh, they, they I guess they didn't air this in future uh, rebroadcasts this is on like CNN or something yeah and he's being interviewed about you know the uh, aftermath of Katrina and all the damage it's done and you can hear this is Cheney and you can hear in the background some guys go hey Cheney go fuck yourself hey go fuck yourself Cheney because this is after what he said to uh, Pat Leahy the former yeah. senator or if he's still oh, a senator, yeah. I don't yeah. know you know for him to go fuck himself and you know this uh, this person happens to know that he's being interviewed and he's just a civilian and he's yelling at the top of his lungs go fuck yourself cheney go fuck yourself and he says it repeatedly and then they have a episode of family guy where they have a a, a bit a cutaway bit of him being a walmart greeter and he's saying that to people as they come in the store go fuck yourself go fuck yourself, go fuck yourself. <laughs> well i miss dick cheney yeah he was good for a laugh yeah i like him of course, of course you, of course you would. Uh, you know, Phil, I think you just like these people because you want to piss us off. I really do. I, I think that deep down, right. deep down, you know, these people are all skunks. They're all assholes. They're all bereft of any kind of human emotion. I mean, how can you try to pass some of the argument. stuff that our uh, that our uh, 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 speaker of the house? Is, keeps trying to come out with Ryan. And, Ryan, and imagine that this guy has any kind of soul whatsoever with the stuff he tries to promote. You know, I, I don't want him there to be emotional. I want him there to 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 do his job. A mayor? <laughs> there. You know. What we it, disagree about is what his job is. Yeah. Well, his job is not is not to be emotional, and it's not to be, uh, uh, you know, uh, for you guys. And to not to labels. want the best for the American people. Right. I think right. that's all they want is the best. Doesn't for the want people. Alex to have to pay thirty one dollars and forty seven cents for a drug that last month was ten dollars. Hey, I had to pay one hundred and ten dollars for my Cialis this month. You know. Good for you. I pay seventy five. I know. I got. Uh, I'm getting ripped off. You, you, well, you, thank, well thank because you, friends, you well uh, you go you go to Kaiser and of course is doctor assisted suicide so you know that's true yeah wait well, Cialis uh, another word for P, uh, for Cialis is pecker pills pecker pills no, well, uh, it, well, I use it's, them for, it's uh, and yet Alex is taking medicine that would I'm assuming you know keep your heart active or well no uh, what it does what it does is Cialis that he's taking I'm taking is a boner pill. Primarily, it's used it's as a boner <laughs> pill, but it can also be used if you have a pr enlarged prostate to uh, alleviate the symptoms of a large prostate. So 
That's what he or and he I could go to the hospital and get the thing but, removed. But it's nice to know when I, well, it's nice to know that when I'm jerking off, I can get a boner now. So you know, it's your drug though, Dallas. What is it again? It's, you said it's saving your life, right? What? Oh no, the drug. The, oh, the Zedia stuff. Oh, I'm saying what's that it, it do again? Because I kind of missed that. Well, I, no, I, I was saying that it it's a pill that enhances the statin because we thought I had a, a problem with my statin that it wasn't really working because all of a sudden my uh, what do you call it? My uh, cholesterol went sky high. Well, okay. I suddenly statin. real I suddenly realized when I was looking at my pills that I have two bottles extra bottles of of the statin. And I think I forgot to take it one month, and that's when they tested me. And that's you see why where I'm getting at, that, though? But, this, but you know? I'm saying, so he put me on the Zetia, which enhances it. So let's say it did work. I mean, they're literally holding my, my life for ransom. I could get a heart attack yeah. because they these guys the aren't. Balls. Yeah, because these guys are, are charging me another 20 bucks. Now, yes, I'm on a fixed income. But I'm not. Whereas Phil is I, lamenting about something that you know you don't really need no, to stay alive. No, well, no, you do. Well, he doesn't need it to stay alive. He needs it to stay comfortable. And exactly. No, no. You, I don't. You know, if you got to get up every hour to pee, uh, you, you know, go to the doctor and get it removed or get some kind of surgical operation done. Well, that's uh, it's in the cards. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, uh, what, what I'm getting at is uh, no, no, Alex, but no, but uh, I I understand what he's doing. He's doing for the, the totem pole of no, but listen, Brian, what he's doing is he is doing it for the for the the not having to for the comfort, let's say, yeah. you know, so he doesn't have to get up seven times at night to take a pee. Yeah, I only got to get up three. <laughs> uh, there is a way, however, to t to do that, and not get up as much without taking Cialis. If, oh, if you get one of those pee no, bottles? No, ibuprofen. Really? I found that when I took ibuprofen, I'd go a whole night without pee. I thought you were taking finasteride. No, I, I, before I was doing all of that, I, I took, uh, uh, Marjorie had like these 400 milligram uh, 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 ibuprofens, and I took them. And I found out from a doctor, yes, it will work. It's just you shouldn't be taking that much ibuprofen. But that yeah. it, it does, you it know, because. It your liver. Huh? Yeah. Doesn't it fuck with your liver? Yes, yeah. it does. If yeah. if you take too and much. And your stomach. Yeah. Four thousand. Yeah. No, milligrams. not your stomach. That's aspirin. Uh, what I love is watching. You know, what I love we watch we watch the news at six, at six thirty every night. And the, the thing is, what's funny is that at her office, my wife said to a guy she works with, "Well, we watch like the six thirty news on NBC," and she says, "She says, you still watch that newscast?" Is don't you just get your stuff off the internet like everybody else? Yeah, that's what's going on. And and you got to know that that's true because all the ads on those shows are one medicine after another, and not right. for stuff that's like young people diseases. This is old people diseases, right? And one of the contradictions on it was like could cause death, could do this, could do that, and you're thinking. Why would I even want to take a chance on this piece of shit pill, you know? And then one no. one that they had on said, "This uh, this if you have cancer, this could add another, uh, this could add more time to your life." And then at the yeah. bottom it says, "Average three months." Yeah. You know, and you're going, "Why should I pay? Why should I pay uh, a copay of like?" Three hundred dollars or something for some pill, some cancer pill that's only going to extend my life maybe three months. I don't remember the drug. By I the way, Marcella, how old, how old are you, Marcella? I'm um, fifty. You're you're fifty. Oh wow! You that don't look it at all. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, you you look. I I thought <laughs> you were. I thought you were maybe in your thirties. Yeah, I was Yay. thinking thirty-five. Oh, so so you're starting to worry about this shit too, right? Oh yeah. Well, not my prostate. That's well, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It'll be here, you know, but the rest breast cancer and all that shit. Don't make me spit my wine out on that one. <laughs> yeah, but but it, 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 if you have a man you live with and he's that age and he's getting up seven times a night to take a pee, it does affect you. <laughs> he's not there yet, but, you know, it's it's looming. It's looming slowly but surely, yeah. Uh, creeps up on you. The, you know the problem with getting your news off the internet 
is you, you see a link. And uh, it says, you know, uh, click on this and uh, for this news story. Yeah. Now, if it's a legitimate news story and it's uh, a Washington Post or something, it yeah. wants you to pay two ninety nine a month because you've already clicked on something uh, on eight clicks. Or you click on it and it's really not the news story. It's a bunch of ads for uh, for this item and that item. And there is no news story. Uh, I, I'm to the point where I don't want to get my news off the Internet anymore. Yeah, but do you want to get it from these news organizations who, uh, while I don't believe in the term fake news because that's just being used to discredit all news and, uh, you know, but that I just don't like it because uh, everybody, every, every news operation has their own slant. Yeah. And I wish there were one news operation that just reported the fucking news and I didn't get these pundits and everybody else interpreting it for me. There isn't. But, you what know, about the Associated Press. No, I think you're watching the right news. You know, the 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 6:30 news on any network because they don't have the time. They don't have the for pundits. The pundits. They don't the have bullshit. the You're right. They don't they're have the pundits. You the news. Uh, have yeah, you seen, seen Sinclair yeah, the Sinclair networks are yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. I have no. Uh, you know the story with the Sinclair Networks, Phil? No. Uh, well, no. this if you got Sinclair is one of the big what biggest television operations in the country when it comes to if local they, local stations. Once they, yes. once they get the Tribune stations, they will be. Yeah. yeah. And and um, they, how can we put it? Game their news. What's it, explain it, Rob? Because I, I basically what they do is they. Now these are local television stations around the country that are purchased, for, you know, and and maybe they were like uh, in New York. We have Channel Eleven, that's the Tribune station. They had their own newscast, and they were uh, whatever. I, I think in L.A. it's KTLA. John Oliver, by the way, did it. Well, that, I was, was going to bring up the John Oliver thing where he they've hired they hire all of these people at that Sinclair level. And they dictate to these news departments all over the country the stories that they need to carry. They write that are the produced they by write, the parent companies. They write the scripts well, for them. Their, they write the leads position? to the. They write. Oh, the, it's extremely uh, right wing. Yeah, and they write the leads. Okay, and uh, then all these different stations have to. They are what they have call must take. carry stories. Yep. And you must carry them. And then they have commentators on all these stations. That There's like two of them, I think. And they're like really right-wing commentators. And it's done not as opinion, but just done as a commentary. Uh, Is there a Tribune station in the Bay Area? I don't think so. I don't hmm. think so. Is but, it Channel 7 uh, no. or 2? No, uh, Ch yeah. Channel 7 is ABC. It's ABC. Channel. That's all right. Independent oh, is fine. Uses Fox. Two uses Fox. Two, two. Well, no. He said seven. Oh, seven is ABC. Yeah. Yeah. What about five? Five is uh, CBS. Uh, CBS, CBS in San Francisco. Yeah. Uh, everywhere else in the world, it's two, but here it's uh, there. It's f uh, five. Yeah. And um, um, but the point is that that uh, you know. Uh, it, you, you, you've got these, these Sinclair stations, and, and Oliver did a beautiful thing on it. If you can go back and watch John Oliver, which I'm sure you don't do, Phil. But uh, he showed how all these stations, they showed like 10 of them, one right after the other, reading the same exact script. And, and they're Sons. all doing what are called local newscasts. These aren't like some kind of national newscasts. This is, you know, right. Channel 5 Eyewitness News, blah, 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 blah. Right. And then they're doing this these stories that are must do stories dictated well, so by the they home have the office. Same traffic backup in every city. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, these are all right wing pieces that they force these news departments to add to their newscasts. Yeah, it's terrible. So, so there's a they have an editorial slant. A slant? It's it's uh, beyond a slant. It's beyond a they slant. They post it as news, though, not as an editorial. Looks like news. It look, all, 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 CNN and uh, all of those have a slant too. And, uh, well, know, but, but not not this way. Okay, not so 
in other words, what you're doing is your people are looking to their local station, their six o'clock news, right? Their five o'clock mm -hmm. news to get so the you, to get the local right. news, and all this stuff is embedded in those newscasts, not in any right. national newscasts they might be carrying. It's embedded in the local news. It's no. propaganda, Phil. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, just like CNN. It's just uh, you know, they don't have as loud no, a voice. No, not like CNN. Actually, they have a more. I think they have a louder voice because it's it's hidden in the fact that these are local TV stations. Who t to this point, you 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 don't have that kind of bent, right? You just have you're you're well, talking well, about the put, fires, put, and put, put, you're put, put, talking about yeah. the robberies and the murders and all that stuff. And these are guys that are coming into your neighbor in, into your living room for years in a lot of cases, and suddenly they're being forced to read these pieces. And if you if you actually do some research on it and and and, uh, and see some of the stories and the things that they're being asked to report, you see it's not typical. If, a fox, you get it. All right, we all but, know. But, but wait, let me add one other thing, Rob. The total audience for Sinclair Station. And it will be more so once they uh, absorb Tribune Broadcasting, is larger than any of the cable networks. Absolutely. Okay, oh. so that's where it's doubly dangerous. Okay, that's where it isn't like CNN. CNN has a small little audience they play to. MSNBC has a small little audience they play to. Fox has an audience that's a little larger that they play to. Uh, but when it comes to uh, Sinclair, they got a huge audience across the country. So you mean they're not using Al Jazeera? Huh? Yeah, they're, not, they're not using Al Jazeera news? What uh, does that mean? I don't get the joke. Sinclair. Well, because it's, uh, you know, it's an opposite to their uh, stand on, uh, on news. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm, I'm kind of happy about it, but I think... Why are you happy about it? You haven't heard heard them do it. If you looked and saw what they were doing, you would even be mad. Man. You would even be mad about it because it's really, it's proper, it's pure and utter propaganda. It's fake, it's fake news at the oh, highest so they, level. So the guy sits there and says the fire uh, in, in, the, in the hills was caused by liberals. Uh, no, you know, no, 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 no. You know, uh, uh, do, nice do, do me a favor. Do me a favor. Go back. Find John Oliver. You know, you've probably got HBO Go or whatever. Go find John Oliver, and, and it'll probably in the listing of that particular show. Look for the show he did on Sinclair. And, <laughs> and, and, and Oliver, uh, while you might not agree with him, uh, does have a great deal of information he packs into what is ostensibly a comedy show. And he shows actual yeah. examples of how this whole thing with Sinclair works, and it's terrible. He actually takes the lead to a couple of the stories that the anchors are reading, and he switches from Sinclair Station to Sinclair Station. The anchors change, but you hear the script continuing. It's, oh, it's really, really it. sad. I found it. What did you find? Uh, and it's a Sinclair uh, thing, and it's so innocently put in there, in between the funny weather person and the sports reporter, and all that crap. Like Americans are not used to seeing that kind of propaganda put there. And, and if if people it, believe yeah. their local newscasts and more than the, they do a lot of the other, I may be wrong, but some of the markets that Sinclair is in, they're like about the only station there, and so it's the place up, that everybody goes to to get their news. And up until this Tribune thing. Sinclair has only been in these little markets. They haven't really had any real major market uh, penetration. But now with with Tribune, and they're picking up Los Angeles, they're picking up New York, they're picking up D.C. So they're getting a lot of major market coverage. Isn't uh, what's it called? Uh, who was it? The one that uh, got in trouble? Uh, news company. What? Oh. For what? For what? Fox. Something. No, it's not Fox. The guy owned the company. Uh, Big communications uh, system. Uh, was uh. it um, Murdoch? Murdoch. Wasn't Murdoch the same way? No. Murdoch doesn't really... I don't hear on Fox 5, I don't really hear a, a, a bent one way or the other in the way the news is reported on the local channel 5 news either in new york or in the DC. only the only He's thing the, but the only thing that murdoch did okay was uh, fox news was bent 
And it wasn't bent, believe it or not, because of Murdoch's politics, which are somewhat right wing. I don't know if he's right wing or whatever, because Murdoch is basically into making money. And that's exactly what Murdoch was into with Fox. He saw an opportunity to make money, to get a large audience, to sell advertising at a large rate. And um, I don't think Murdoch uh, particularly cared about the message, you know, being subverting the people. Okay, he all he cared about was making money. And uh, would you agree with that, Rob? I mean. Uh, yeah, I mean, Roger Ailes went to him with the idea, right? To yeah. He started Fox News, and he brought Roger Ailes in, and Roger Ailes said, this is what we need to do. And he let Roger run with it, and Roger built it into that. I think, you know, if it had failed, <laughs> he would have thrown the message right out the window, but it didn't right. fail. He, he would, the newspaper. I, I actually think Murdoch would have gone all left wing if he thought there was money in it. The newspaper I used to read uh, in the early 80s, uh, was the Washington Times, and the guy who was the uh, editor for that, I think his name was Armitage, and uh, you know the that paper was owned by uh, Reverend Sung Young Moon. Uh, was he the Moonies with the flowers? Yeah, he was the Moonies with the flowers, but he stayed, you know, he stayed <laughs> out of it. And Armitage, I believe that's that's uh, I believe that's how you pronounce the guy's name, uh, and he was a newspaper and a TV guy, and he was the one that uh, really put the Washington Times together and. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, uh, well, uh, let me let me ask Brian question. Brian a question here, since Brian's been kind of quiet, and I want to draw him out, or maybe that's a mistake. I don't know. I haven't figured that out yet. But uh, uh, did you hear McCain's speech today at all, or any no, parts of, part of it? But I yeah, saw blips on my phone and headlines about how he came back with uh, from his surgery and yeah. Put his two cents in on the vote. On yeah, the, uh, healthcare bill. yeah. Because I, I, I would like to know how you felt about what he said, which was quite interesting. I thought, you know, well, I can't really comment on it since I didn't hear. Yeah. I didn't hear his speech. Yeah. Uh, what it about sounds the, like from based on what uh, what you guys are saying, it sounds like, and especially what uh, is it, Charlene? Uh, what, uh, no, uh, Marcella. 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 I'm sorry. That's okay. What that. He has a history of talking out one side of his mouth and farting out the other side yeah. anymore versus the way he acted well, you know, 15 he, years he, ago yeah. before that. Yeah. Um, I, 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 you know, from what I heard of the speech, and I didn't hear all of it, uh, I was very happy with what I heard. But what, did anybody hear Donald Trump speaking to the Boy Scout Jamboree? Oh, yeah, I, I heard a couple what of comments. What the hell is he doing? Huh? What the hell is he doing? Campaigning for the scouts? I mean, I mean scouts. Jesus. he wants the Boy Scouts folks. That's what he's looking for. Yeah, I, 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 it's almost like he was trying to create a new Hitler Jugend out of the Boy Scouts. Exactly. I was just waiting for the Zig Heil to come out. Did you hear any of that, Phil? Uh, were we, uh, uh, excuse me. Did, I was did uh, we, watching John Oliver. Oh, no, you don't have to watch him now. Wait till we're through. <laughs> but what did you, what, I'm sorry, I didn't catch uh, what, what you were What I was saying was, did you hear about Trump with the Boy Scouts? Uh, yeah, he, um, uh, he uh, I, I saw, uh, you know, the photo op of him in front of all the Boy Scouts. Was Pence there, too? Uh, I don't know. No. Pence was there. No. But you did you hear uh, any of else. what he said to the Boy Scouts? Uh, he said something about um, his AG uh, and that if he... Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Something yeah. He said, you're fired. Uh, you know, he, he used his, uh, his, his yeah, term. But yeah, but, I, but my, my question is, is this the proper place to politicize in front no. of fucking 12-year-olds? Yes, exactly. No, there is. No, it is. It's not right. It's not well, right. You know, uh, I don't know why he was there entirely, but you know he. Well, because I mean, if you're if you're the head of the Boy Scouts and the president of the United States wants to speak at the Boy Scout Jamboree, of course you're going to let the president come and speak to the Boy Scout Jamboree, but you're not going to want him to indoctrinate them. Uh, yeah, I, I would have been happy if if he didn't say those things, but you know he he used it as a uh, a bully pulpit. 
but, but, uh, but who's he, who's he bullying? Is, afterwards, are these Boy Scouts going to go out and rub two sticks together and set your house on fire? I mean, what? What? Look, I thought he was being very funny when he used his catchphrase, you're fired. Uh, you know, yeah, that was the day before on Tom Price. That wasn't at the... No, no, this was at the Boy Scout. No, thing. I don't I, think it was. I, I think, think he's right. I think he also... He goes, to speak, he goes to speak at the Boy Scouts meeting because he, he can't go anywhere else or people are going to ask him anything that he'd have to try to answer. Well, wasn't there a Boy Scout crowd that said, when are you going to show us your tax returns? Yeah, right. Yes, uh, Mike has his ha- Mike has his hand up. Did you also hear Trump say about uh, uh, what's his name, John McCain? Also, McCain. Oh, okay. McCain. Yeah. He said he's not a war hero. So what the hell's what? What's uh, old dumb shit doing? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. He said, uh, "I how's he when he was running for office?" Uh, yeah. John McCain, a war hero. Uh, he, I, 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 my war heroes don't get caught or whatever, yeah. right? He's a loser. And, and then all of a sudden, John McCain gets sick. And what is Trump saying about him? A great American hero. Right. Yeah. He Bullshit. needs his vote today. What? You know, he needed his vote in the health care thing. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, come on. You know, be, I, I, be at least and, consistent. And, 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 be at least consistent in being an asshole. Okay. Did, did he say he is an asshole? He come, he'll always will be one. Didn't he come out against those two senators that uh, were uh, not going to vote for the health care bill uh, during that uh, 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 Boy Scout thing? He and that's the voice. one that said, you know, uh, you know, or and then he also said something about if you like your job. Uh, you know, you what? What? Uh, 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 Christy? I sound like uh, a threat. Uh, I may no. be wrong about that. I mean, is it Christy Carrington or whatever model? He actually uh, wrote a, a tweet saying nasty uh, things about a, a model. I mean, come yeah, on, the yeah. man's president well, of the United States. Don't you have better fucking things to do? No, uh, it's early in the morning. He lost his mind. I mean, if you have that much free time, <laughs> uh, Trump, take out the garbage. You know. Did anybody read what um, Newt Gingrich said about Trump? No. no. <laughs> Called him one of the most brilliant men to ever sit in the White House. No, they're winners. <laughs> That's no joke. He called him one of the most brilliant men to ever sit in the White House. Yeah, I heard that. Uh, the most I'll give you some farter. It's, it's because uh, Trump stands all the time. What? What does that say about Newt Gingrich? He says, no, he breaks the chair. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, uh, I, I think Trump has uh, some good points. I don't understand his way what of communication. Uh, the Boy Scout things over the top. You have to admit. Uh, I want to hear know. Phil. I want to hear Phil right now because he's 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 finally going to say something about Trump that's not you know blind love. Oh, I love Trump. <laughs> oh, well, really? Go ahead. What were you going to say? Well, you know, I'm not I'm not uh, enamored with the way he's communicating. But then uh, then again, I don't know if he has an, a, a different agenda and he has a plan for this. You know, I, I, I don't know. You know and, when do you uh, worry that that he doesn't have a plan for it and everything is haphazard? And when do you begin to worry? At what point nothing gets done and everybody is going, what? Huh? Or do you think anything would have gotten done with Hillary? Uh, uh, Except she would have enriched herself? Uh, no, no, she wouldn't have enriched herself. That I don't think she would have done. Or she would have, you know, uh, uh, in, engrossed in her power? No, I'd, I think that she probably would have been uh, pretty competent. Uh, I think that, you know, if you want to say that the... Uh, the um, uh, Clintons are overrated. I might go along with you on that. And I, I was too. I was watching the '90s, and they brought up the whole thing about Clinton signing acts that went against the civil rights and so on. You know, I mean, he did some bad stuff when he was trying to get reelected. He did. Uh, uh, he he. The the reason that you know Rob and I can't work in the radio business is because of the um, doing away with the. Uh, uh, the amount of radio stations you could own, you know, telecommunications like, act yeah. as a comprom- act of compromise with the Republican Congress. Yep, that's right. right. So, uh, you know, right. well, actually, he, I think, uh, uh, changed the uh, communications act, telecommunications act, but it wasn't. It that was only part of it. The the relaxation of ownership rules. There was another reason why he was doing it, and I can't remember now. 
And I think it had more to do with telephones or something like that than it had to do with that whole bill. But, uh, you know, I mean, Clinton was not great. But I do think that at this point, uh, she would have been a better president than Trump is. Trump isn't a president. Trump is, uh, Trump's too lazy to be a president. Well, He's you know, going through the if, he, if he helps uh, get us on track with Russia and China what's and on track uh, with Russia? What, what, what's Russia. on track with Russia? Capitulating to a killer, to a murderer? Look, the guy has got one of the most powerful countries in the world. I don't give a don't shit. I don't give a shit. This is a guy who's also backing Syria in the war against its people. This is a That's guy. Right. It's now, just been rumored that, in fact, uh, the Soviet Union has been supplying uh, arms to the Taliban. Well, uh, didn't Trump just agree to uh, to not uh, do something with the Syrians? I mean, uh, it was beyond the ceasefire. There was some other uh, agreement that he came up with with the Russians. Yeah. That, well, because uh, he it, it, you, he, if he starts agreeing with the Russians, if he starts agreeing with Putin, he's signing a pact with the devil. Okay? Uh, and it is uh, not Scott, a wise pact to make. How, if, Scott, you've been quiet. How do you feel about this? Well, well. Putin, what Phil's talking about is basically Putin told Trump to quit, to ha quit having the CIA give guns to the rebels in Syria, right. so that That's, the Russians right. can can kick the ass of the rebels easier. Well, I thought there was a uh, a truce, a ceasefire. No, no, uh, no. Between, no. Uh, no. Where'd you no. get that one? Well, that I didn't one, hear that one. one. That came out of the G20 summit. No. Uh, yeah, there was uh, yeah there, there was a uh, there was there was a ceasefire, uh, and, uh, and and the, between the Russians and the U.S. Do you, do you and, know anything uh, about this, Scott? Nope. Uh, Kevin, you know anything about this? I'd have to look it up. I'd have to look it up. I don't yeah. recall it. Kevin, you know anything about this? I thought Phil might be right. There was some kind of a ceasefire that was supposed to happen that Sunday. Oh, and, uh, and, and by Monday, everything was back to business as usual? Well, yeah, that's what we were all thinking. <laughs> so it fell through. through. I figured was going to blow up that next day or whatever. Yeah. But I thought I remember something about that. All I'm saying is, you, you know, you don't make it, it, any deal that Putin... Putin's very, very sharp. All right, here it is. He's a smart guy. July 8th, uh, Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin have agreed to a ceasefire in southwest Syria starting Monday, midday on Sunday. Uh, following their first meeting at the G summit on Friday, so uh, yeah, this, so this deal uh, was brokered by Trump and Putin uh, holds uh, and and it's holding in southwest Syria. Southwest Syria. Yeah. Well, what about the rest of the country? Yeah. What about the rest of the South, fucking country? Is, is southwest There's Syria. Shit out of each other. <laughs> is, is southwest Syria next to Iraq? Is that the? Is that why they're doing that? Uh, Could very. Does anybody well, know what well, Syria? Southwest, you know, the southwest would like? have to be close to Iraq. Yeah. Yeah, All right. I think it is. Well, maybe that's uh, why Trump uh, is more interested. Yeah, what about in, what in about stopping. the rest of the country? What about the intrusion of the Soviets into the internal affairs of the, of Iraq? Oh, like the intrusion of the United States into the internal well, affairs. You know, you of know what you Iran. do is you I mean, try you try to bring something else up to dissuade us from asking the one question, and that is, I mean, how long are we going to keep making a bargain with the devil? That's that's the question here. You know, we've been doing yeah. that for years. We did it with uh, with uh, you know FDR uh, did it during World War Two. You know, you don't know. don't try to excuse our our current bad behavior with old bad behavior. Well, it wasn't you know, good then. About, it isn't right. good now. It's about time we recognize them. They recognized us, and that's going to put you on the path to peace. Oh, peace. you're you're you know something? Baloney. You're going to no. be up to your ass in fucking guns and bullets or learn from our mistakes it worked with the germans it worked with the japanese you know uh at one moment we're putting the atomic bomb on them and the next moment we're buying all their cars you know it's it's uh though when you when you have trade when you have talks you have peace and right now he's the devil this is some and, of the know. biggest crap i've ever heard coming out of one mouth at one time <laughs> in the history uh, yeah, of this you, program you just you just don't want to listen to the truth you know, are you telling me that we're better off not negotiating with these people, not talking to these people because they're no good? No, I say it's better if you deal with them, if they're going to be honest with you. But the fact is you can't trust Vladimir Putin. Yes, Mike. 
why is Putin interfering with the ones down in Khmer and all those other Russian uh, countries? They interfered with their country he down wants- there. Bully him and they're telling him, hey, you got to do it this way or not, you know. Or that, that's a bunch of bull crap. Putin is a, is a freaking devil himself. He's just like the guy in Korea, North Korea, same way. Yeah, but, you know, if we don't get a start getting along with the guy in North Korea, he's already got missiles that can hit Alaska and Hawaii. Uh, I was reading. Well, okay, I was how, reading fast, how fast the United States can react to that? Now, I, Less I, than 30 I, I, seconds, I, our boys yeah. will be up in the air bombing the hell I, out there of was, There was a story the about that. There was a story. Well, don't give me that crap. There was a story about that today that our military has said, no way North Korea could get a missile here because we can shoot it down before it ever does. Right, but, but we, they can get it to South Korea. It's only 15 miles. Well, they could carry it there, is what you're saying. Yeah, they could carry, they could it, carry it there. Yeah. So, you know, and, you know, the South Koreans are our allies. We're pledged to protect them. And that would pull us into a nuclear war. As long as they first, pay, first of all, would get us into a nuclear war. And secondly, uh, you're, uh, you're full of crap. <laughs> and China, you. right now, is looking down above, you know, looking down at North Korea and saying, what in the hell are you guys are doing? But North Korea is not listening to them. You know, well, they, they, you're going to have to fight, uh, what, half a million too much of Chinese marching on you? Uh, you know, one atomic bomb can take care of that. It's just that, uh, oh, you know, we, we've asked, or the United States has asked China to, to intercede, and they don't seem to have uh, the ability to do that. This guy is is off his rocker, and the only yeah. person he listens to is that basketball player with the red hair. Uh, yeah. They are doing a lot of trade. By the way, we've been joined by Jack Bishop. We have more than a full house now. We have uh, we have uh, 11 people with me. Now we have a quorum. Huh? Now we have a quorum. Uh, well, actually, no. Actually, we have ten people with me. Excuse me. We do have ten people, so it's a full house. Yeah. yeah. Hello, Jack. Hello there, Mr. B. I just wanted to say, you know, Phil Meyer has not spent enough time in Texas. We've got a little saying down here: when you lay down with dogs, you get up with fleas. Phil, you're scratching all over in so many places; it's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jack. You hit uh, the button. You know, sometimes uh, you gotta fumigate, and uh, and then you can talk with these guys. Me, this is another one of his syllogisms here. Another one of his little. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! We've had a cold war since World War II. Isn't it time that we've been talking and doing business with the Russians for twenty years? Your current president just happens to be the only one we've had that's been bought and paid for. Uh, and I don't that's true. Do what I say, or I release P tape. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least he didn't have to have P. Film at uh, 11 on the P tape. Yeah. Yeah, Lee. Well, if there was a P tape, where is it? You know, I mean, if there was a P tape, it would have been leaked to the press by now. Nah, it's pardon, a, the, pardon the pun. It's. Yeah. it's, <laughs> it's, it's yeah. Putin has it, and if, and if uh, Trump. It doesn't come through for him, which he's not going to be able to, apparently. We'll see it. Mm-hmm. It it won't be very exciting. How do you know? Been you know? there, done that, brother. Oh, okay, so there's a peak tape on you, too? Oh, I hope so. <laughs> All right. <laughs> like I say, film at 11. <laughs> but while I'm thinking about it, I want to remind everybody to join me and Amy Manuel for the intersection coming along after this. But Phil, you got to quit drinking that Kool-Aid, man. It's it's killing you. All that sugar. Yeah, uh, I got the diet Kool-Aid. Still, yeah, has sugar in it though. Even worse. I mean, if you're if you're going to drink, see if Jim Jones. Yeah, if you're going to drink the Kool-Aid, go full bore, brother. Don't hold back. All Put right. the sugar in there. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I, I was uh, uh, looking at something else. Yeah, uh, you know, you got all these sayings, Kool-Aid and this and that and the other thing. Meanwhile, we've got, uh, you know, ha- a third of the, uh, of, the, of the world that we hadn't got along with for years. We got, you know, the Chinese were the devils. Now all of a sudden we're in business with them. 
all you have to do is open up it's trade, not, open it, up it, a dialogue. It's not, it's not all of a sudden. Well, We've been in business it, with the Chinese since the 70s, certainly the 80s. We've been in business with Russia since the 90s. Yeah, What's the you, bitch, brother? Well, uh, it always says, let's sell them some refrigerators and a couple of Chevrolets. Yeah, well, it's it's or it's Cadillacs. Yeah, it's more than that. It, it's all about fear. The Russians fear us. We feared them. Uh, you know, if all of a sudden we ally and and we start talking, uh, the fear will go away. Don't but you? They're, think they're been hacking talking? our election. Yeah. Don't you think we we've been forgive that? Oh, no, that's interesting. Uh, they you say they're hacking our election. Uh, you know, the in Georgia. Uh, the uh, the um, electronic stuff, the computers that they use, these diebold computers that uh, and touch screens that they were using for uh, the elections, they they were totally open. They thought that it was encrypted, but it wasn't. You know, we're using 2002 technology to uh, to run our election system, and the patches and all of those things that you need. To, uh, to secure those things don't exist anymore. If you had a computer that you bought in 2002, do you think you could be used it today? What is all that noise? Somebody's typing. Our elections should not be run by private companies. They should be run by the American people, and it well, should be a secured right. system. And in Georgia, and in Georgia, which had the most Somebody vulnerable one. Are talking about Atlanta or Macon? Uh, no, the whole state. Uh, the, the state of Georgia had the most vulnerable system. There was two states that had a vulnerable system. Georgia was one of them. And uh, they were able to download. Uh, somebody actually wrote a program during his lunch hour. And when he came back from his lunch hour, he downloaded uh, uh, almost all of the voter registration and uh, and the result and, and yes. all of those things. And eight uh, and eight years ago on American television, we saw how easy it was to hack electronic voting machines. Right. You know, it's it's a funny thing, but Canada is able to have an election with paper and pencil. Right. So you're going to blame Trump for that? No, I'm going to blame us. Trump. I'm not blaming Trump. I'm blaming us for not saying, hey, if Look. you're going to steal my election, I'm going to make you have to stuff the ballot box. Like Lyndon Johnson did no, back in yeah, Or Kennedy. But you know what? If you're a retailer and you don't want stuff to get stolen, you don't put small items by the front door. You don't make it easy for uh, for a thief to, to take Bill. the opportunity. How, how would you solve the problem? Ball is in your court. It's, you know, we, how we, would you solve I, the problem? I, I agree that the, uh, that, uh, the systems that uh, are out there are too old and they're in private hands. And uh, I think that we ought to go back to the paper ballot. And uh, oh, good. You know, uh, 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 let's go back further than that. How about a uh, slate and chisel? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that might be good too. What do we do about hanging chads? <laughs> no chads. You got to actually make a mark. Uh, but uh, and you don't you know, think and you don't think that that can be hacked. Uh, not no, not on the level that they. Well, no. Seen. Here's how they used to hack them when we did it that way. They used to yeah. just take the whole ballot box and throw it in a river somewhere. Yeah, yeah that can only be one precinct or two precincts. You, you're not going to have the whole state. You are be, you are so uh, naive with this stuff, Phil. Well, you are really you know, naive. You know, if somebody every, wants to hack an election, no matter what technology you use, even if it is a chisel and a slate. But it uh, won't be the Russians. And. You know, the, if the Russians did it, they just saw yeah. an opportunity. There was a vulnerability that that we have in our system, well, here's and, the and question. we deal with that vulnerability. Well, here's the question I ask. You know, do you think they got their money's worth with this no. guy that's in the White House now? Is By this, the way, Jack, I'm playing the theme. You better get oh. the fuck out of here. Sure, and they're, they're still playing. They're still getting their money's worth. Yeah, you better get the hell out of here. Yep, I'm out of here. Okay, bye. See you later. Get rid of Jack Bishop. There we go. The reason he has to leave is they're up next uh, with he and Amy. They're going to do their thing called The Intersection. Hey, I want to thank you all for... By the way, to some of the people who are watching, I froze for a while. For some reason, this one camera freezes up on me every night. So tomorrow night, I'm going to use the other camera and make sure I don't get frozen or something like that. 
Anyway, I want to thank you all for joining me, uh, uh, Phil Meyer, Scott Boddicker, Kevin, thank you, Brian, thank you, Marcella, thank you. great to have you blue screen, you know, green screened. Green uh, I'm an older I'm television guy when we, use, when we use blue. Remember blue, Rob? I remember blue. Yeah. So when will you have yours, Alex, run them? Uh, probably never. Uh, uh, Mike, thank you. Tony, thank you. I want to wave goodbye, everybody, and say uh, farewell to the audience. Bye bye. And that's our uh, that's our, uh, our 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 panel for tonight. Uh, and uh, let me see here. Let me turn uh, this off. Okay. And you got a picture of me. See, it's moving now. See, for a while there, I wasn't moving because for some reason that one camera loves to freeze up on me. And I have no idea why that happens. Anyway, I'm through for tonight. Jack and Amy are next. After that, it's Connections uh, at the mid at the 1 o'clock in the morning. We'll see you again tomorrow, same time. Same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? <laughs> <laughs>